Good afternoon, distinguished delegates. Um, my name is Tobena Erojikwe. I'm the chairman of the Board of Institute of Continuing Legal Education of the MBA. And it is my pleasure to welcome you to today's session of the New Week's handholding series. In fact, this is the last day and this is the penultimate session of the series. Um, I'll introduce the speaker for today. Speaker for today is Dr. Adeoya Adefulu. Adeoya is a partner in the law firm of Odujiri and Adefulu with over 20 years of professional experience spanning the fields of petroleum law and policy, electricity law and policy, corporate and project finance. He obtained his law degree from the University of Lagos and was called to the Nigerian bar. He also holds a master's and doctorate degree from the Center for Energy, Petroleum and Mineral Law and Policy, Scotland. Dr. Adefulu's interests include oil and gas regulatory reform, gas utilization, energy reform, energy transition, and environmental law. He regularly speaks at local and international fora on Nigerian energy matters. Dr. Adefulu was involved with the petroleum industry bill from its initial drafts in 2009 till its passage in 2021. He's the managing editor of www.petroleumindustrybill.com, the leading information portal that provides up-to-date information on the petroleum industry bill, now the Petroleum Industry Act 2021. He was a member of the Nigerian National Assembly's Technical Committee on Petroleum Industrial Reforms from 2015 to 2019. He advises several indigenous and international oil companies on the implementation of the Petroleum Industry Act. Dr. Adefoli, the chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association section on business law, the MBA, SBL. Um, Dr. Adefoli will be speaking to you today on building a career in corporate law practice and he also discuss the sections of the MBA. It is my pleasure to yield the floor to Dr. Adioya Adefumu. Thank you very much. Adioya, the floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon, uh, colleagues. Good afternoon, friends. Uh, good afternoon, Tobina. Let me first of all start by thanking the Nigerian Bar Association uh, for putting this together. I think it's an excellent idea um, and it's a great initiative. Uh, so uh, thank you to our president, uh, YC Mikiao, SAN, and thank you to you uh, for actually organizing this. Uh, it looks like we have some teething problems with, uh, uh, with the slides. So let's, I'm, I'm gonna try and put that up. But I also want to encourage you as we do that uh, to share as much information as possible. We expect this, I expect this to be an interactive session. Can everybody just confirm that you can hear me clearly? We can hear you. Okay, great. Um, so I can see people are already sending some chats, uh, et cetera. Uh, great. So I am going to, I hope that we can make use of those chats um, in our discussions today. So just bear with me a second as I put this up, uh, try and put the slides up. I may also change connections if that's okay. Um, so my quick question to you, and please use the chats as we're doing this, is what do you understand a corporate lawyer to be? Uh, so can you just put up um, your chats? And Latif, you're gonna help me out in reading some of the things that come up on the screen. So what, it, what do we understand a corporate lawyer to be? I'm still waiting, nobody has put anything up yet. Everybody was saying hello. And now that I'm asking a question, I, I can't see anything. Very good. 
So one person has made a comment. So a corporate lawyer is a lawyer who is involved in any legal work that does not involve litigation. Experts in corporate law. Recording in progress. Someone said a company lawyer. Can you still see and hear me clearly? Yes, right, right on. We can hear you. Okay. So I, I involve your responses are flowing. Corporate and commercial. Sorry. Someone who's largely involved in transactions relating to business. Excellent. The corporate lawyer is one that specializes on company organization and compliance. Very good. A lawyer who is involved in corporate law practice, registration of companies, advice, among other related matters. A lawyer who practices outside the courtroom. Um, what else can I say? Just bear with me a second. They are tasked with ensuring a company's transactions. Corporate lawyer is one whose primary duty is to ensure compliance with corporate laws within and outside Nigeria. Very good. Um, corporate lawyer to be that lawyer who advises on compliance and business transactions. Corporate lawyer is a lawyer who undertakes the legal aspect of setting up businesses, documentations, corporate governance, regulatory compliance, to so the lifespan and even at the termination of the lifespan. Of and finally, corporate lawyer is a lawyer who specializes in commercial transactions and company-related matters. Thank you. All very, very good uh, uh, comments. And my question is to Bina, I don't know why I'm here when everybody is uh, able to answer this, these questions so competently. Uh, can you see my slides? Yes, sir. we can see your slides. We can see your slides. Mm. Great. Just bear with me a second. I just want to make sure that it's projected properly. Do we lose slides? The slides just went off now. So building a career in corporate law practice. So Tobina, let me, let me thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, and I will be talking about what corporate law practice is um, uh, and, and why that's an alternative for you. And who's a corporate lawyer? What skills do you require? Uh, having a career plan. And I think that's really, really important for everybody. Um, uh, specializing, uh, continuing education and professional development, uh, very important in the context of what Tobina is doing, uh, competency framework. And I thought I'd just sneak that in because that's something that we in the SBL have developed and I think will be useful for you. And I will talk a little bit about the section. Obviously the bias is towards the section which I am a member, uh, but you know, I'll try and talk talk about the other sections as well. So who's a corporate lawyer? And many of the chats earlier kind of pointed out this. I think the first thing is in the context of Nigeria, because you could say who's a corporate lawyer. Uh, another way in which you phrase this is, uh, you know, uh, sometimes you could call yourself solicitor. And there might be a distinction. There is a distinction, actually. Uh, because if you delve further, you might find out that, or you will find out that you can be a solicitor, but not necessarily a corporate solicitor. Uh, and perhaps this is a good time to tell you about uh, something that some, a common mistake I see in, uh, in CVs. Um, so, you know, I've seen people say that they have experience in solicit uh, 
let me advise those of you that are on this call to please not use that term to define what you do as a solicitor. It's um, the, the term soliciting is much more appropriate for uh, something else uh, that you probably will not want to be associated with. But essentially, a solicitor is, uh, in the United Kingdom, for example, there is a distinction between a solicitor and a barrister. Uh, the barrister will typically be the one that goes to court, even though you do have solicitors who go to court. Uh, a barrister will go to court, uh, will typically be instructed by the solicitor, and not by the client directly. Uh, whilst the solicitor is, will take instructions from the client, um, advise the client on various aspects, legal aspects of their work. Uh, and so that distinction of solicitor versus advocate in Nigeria is not, um, it's not going to be exactly the same thing because all of us are called to the Nigerian bar where barristers and solicitors of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. So effectively, I can practice as a barrister and go to court. I can uh, do work that is traditionally uh, solicitor's work. Uh, but what you found over the years, and I would say this goes back further than 50 years, and, and some people may not realize this, but it goes back as far as 50, over 50 years ago. There are certain people who have chosen that this will be what they will do. They will only practice as solicitors. And what does that mean? Uh, they will never uh, appear in court. Um, so one of the foremost firms for solicitors' work, and popular work in particular, is Chris Ogubanja and Co. Chris Ogubanja and Co. has been in existence for, well, certainly north of 50 years, probably closer to 60, maybe 70 years. Um, and lots of people who you may have heard of came out of that firm. Uh, one of my partners, Senator Dujiri, uh, one of the founders of, of our firm, um, uh, came out of Chris Ogumbanjo and Co. Uh, Mr. Aswe Godalu was in Chris Ogumbanjo and Co. Uh, Senator Odoma was in uh, Chris Ogumbanjo and Co. Uh, the founding uh, chairman of the section of business law, Mr. George Tomi, was also in uh, Chris Ogumbanjo and Co. So, so lots of people like that. And given those examples, um, the number of those people that I have mentioned to you have chosen uh, to practice solely as solicitors. So uh, my, my partner, the uh, founder of the firm, Senator Dujain, has never been to court. Uh, so other than when he wore his wig, wig and gown for uh, call to bar, uh, he hasn't had uh, the need uh, to wear that again, uh, certainly not in, uh, in the service of the client. I myself I have never uh, uh, practiced as a barrister. I've never been to court other than during uh, sort of the court attachment process of law school. So lots of people have chosen uh, to go that route, uh, the route of the solicitor. But you can be a solicitor but also be serving primarily individuals. So for example, if you're dealing with uh, you know, uh, some certain aspects of real estate matters, you might serve only individuals or certain aspects of, well, personal estate matters, we would be serving primarily individuals or, uh, I mean, there are a few other examples like that. But some people actually specialize in serving, giving legal advice just to businesses and organizations. So, they serve only corporates. So in our firm, traditionally, our clients are specifically corporates. And indeed, the individuals that we serve, we serve them in corporate related matters and not uh, in respect of uh, personal, um, personal legal matters. And you cover a wide, and I say wide, or narrow, range of matters. And when I see, when I try to make this uh, wide or narrow, there are some people who, in terms of their corporate practice, cover 
uh, everything they do, every yeah. aspect. Artists, they're in real estate, they are uh, in general uh, uh, commercial law matters, they're in trade matters, they do IP, they do uh, uh, M and A. Uh, uh, you know, they cover they cover the field, whilst some others have taken their specialization as solicitor even further by specializing as uh, specializing in certain areas. So, uh, Shola um one of uh, one of the people that I respect um, in, in the profession, is, uh, uh, is primary is actually a solicitor, and his practice is very narrow. His practice is in energy and natural resources. Uh, as far as I know, Shola Dickerson uh, doesn't do anything other than energy and natural resources. Uh, there are certain firms that, are rep that have a reputation for intellectual property. That's what they do. Uh, in those firms, other than intellectual property, very, very little uh, uh, do they get themselves involved in. And increasingly, we're beginning to see firms who are more involved in uh, technology. Uh, one of uh, members of our council, Ruth Miyogien, is a technology lawyer. There is a gentleman called Basil Udotai. Basil Udotai, is the firm, his firm is called, I think it's Technology Law Associates or something like that. It's a narrow field. That is what they do. They do not do anything else. I myself am primarily an energy lawyer, energy and natural resources lawyer. And if you did a Google search on me, uh, most of the things that you'll find in relation to my practice will be energy and natural resources matters. So there are several areas in terms of corporate law practice that you can cover. Uh, some, there are increasingly people that are just corporate governance lawyers or MA lawyers. Uh, corporate and project finance, intellectual property, contracts and plans. And our work involves uh, research and interpretation of laws. Uh, that's a big part of the work. Uh, laws, regulations, and legal documents. And it is geared to solving business challenges. And I want to challenge you. I think this is really important because um, one of the things, and I always talk about this when I'm talking to lawyers, one of the things I see as a challenge for us lawyers is that our education has been shaped uh, primarily by lawyers. So you go into university, and other than some of the foundational classes that you take in year one, uh, from year two through to year five, you are mostly or sometimes 100% taught by lawyers. Your lecturers, uh, teaching you contract law, teaching you tort law, criminal law, uh, uh, company law, etc. They are all lawyers. And then you graduate from uh, university, and then you go on to the law school. And again, you are taught by lawyers. And it builds uh, a kind of insularity, uh, meaning that because everybody around you and indeed, even when you graduate, the people that supervise you in your work are lawyers. Uh, you're supervised by an associate, a senior associate, or a partner in the firm, all of them lawyers. And therefore, you tend to think only to answer the question for the lawyer. So if you look back at the way in which uh, opinions are written, etc., they're almost written in a form in which we were taught how to write answers in university. So following the IRAP principle, issues, rules, applications, conclusion, etc. And it's a good formula. It's simple. It's a great framework. It helps you to work. But you have to realize, in particular as a corporate lawyer, that your work is to solve a business challenge. Frankly, the client is not interested in the highfalutin idea, they want the law to solve a problem that they have. 
And so if you are solving a business challenge, what does that mean? You cannot just understand law. You need to understand business. What is this business about? What problem are they trying to solve? And how can the law solve that? Um, I think I'm moving on to, and then of course we are involved in negotiating, drafting, and reviewing all kinds of contracts. And I think this is really important. It's worthwhile mentioning it. Our law school, and I, you know, improvements keep getting made every year, but they don't teach us some of the fundamentals around negotiation of contracts. So what do you do in terms of negotiation? How do you sit at the table? So that's a skill set you need to find and develop for yourself. There are obviously, um, you know, I don't know if it's still called LDC, but legal drafting and conveyancing, obviously the uh, elements of drafting are taught, but how, are, how is that taught and how are we taught to draft in a way in which it's clear so that our clients, the business that we're trying to solve their problems, understand the contract. And then what does it mean to review a contract? What are you looking for when you are reviewing a contract drafted by somebody else? Uh, uh, you know, I, I remember someone, uh, you know, my wife uh, is also a lawyer and she was uh, sort of sent in at the deep end and asked to review the contract when she first started in this organization. And she had no idea what to do. Uh, and, you know, her supervisor said to her, don't be, I don't want to see uh, spelling mistakes and minor, minor errors. But that's what tends to happen, tends to happen when you are newly, uh, you, newly called to bar. That's what you, that's what you first start to look out for. But the principle of what is important to look out for in a contract needs to be taught. Um, and, uh, and if you haven't been taught that at the law school, some of it's a skill set you need to make sure that you develop. And there are books around what you should be, uh, what you should be looking out for and, and all that sort of material. Uh, let me move quickly on to the next slide. So I've told you what being a corporate lawyer is. And one point again that I uh, uh, you know, try to underline is commercial awareness. That's really, really important. Uh, it's not enough to be a lawyer and to understand the law. As a corporate lawyer, you need to understand uh, and look at it from the perspective of your client. And your client is actually not the in-house lawyer. Uh, some of us tend to think that. Ideally, your work should not be written uh, in such a way that you pass it on to the in-house lawyer and they have to interpret it for the client um, who is, you know, the, the, the person that is making the final decision, the MD, uh, the GM in charge of that group, etc. So commercial awareness, having a clear understanding of what the business needs are, right, and how you frame it within the law. Obviously, interpersonal skills, because you have to deal with people all the time. And these are skill sets, obviously, that uh, you will need even as a, as a litigator or an advocate. Critical thinking, as lawyers, we need to understand. I, I think that's one skill set that we definitely, that our profession brings to us. But we need to hone that skill set further. Obviously, uh, we don't need to talk about ethics. That's a fundamental part of our profession. But as a young lawyer, you need to understand that time management is going to be very, very critical to, for you in your practice as a business lawyer. And it's important for you to be assertive. You need to be clear. Uh, and when you are clear and you have a clear understanding of the issues that you're dealing with, you need to, to be able to stand your ground when it is absolutely necessary. And communication skill, if there is anything that you want to take away from here, the, your ability to communicate is the most important skill for you as a lawyer. And communicate via uh, 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 orally, communicating 
uh, in writing, communicating through your body language. It's a skill set that you have to, and you think you have it, you don't have it. Um, and this is not a challenge to you. It's a challenge. It is a challenge that I put myself through every day. I don't believe that I have uh, the ultimate set of communication skills. And communication skill also means when do I stop talking? When do I start talking? Um, what intonation do I use? How do I vary my tone so that people that I'm speaking with are not bored? If that is a skill, if there's any skill set you want to make sure that you ground yourself in, that skill set is important. And it's important in your early days because what's going to happen is when you join a law firm, they're going to give you an associate uh, that will be responsible for your work and looking over your work. The last thing they want to do is correcting your work and redacting your work heavily. So it is important uh, that you train yourself to communicate. And talking about written communication in particular, uh, you have to ensure that your, that your message is clear. Uh, again, you know, as I said, we've been taught by lawyers, and so we were rewarded for writing long paragraphs and long essays and long opinions, et cetera. Ultimately, the important thing is to make sure, communication is about making sure that the person on the other side understands you. So clarity of language is critical. And I would add, please, brevity. Uh, is also really important. Don't go on be very long. Uh, say what you want to say. Say it clearly. Um, can you still hear me? Can someone just... Loud and, clear, loud and clear, I can hear you. Excellent. Okay. So say what you want to say. Say it clearly. Say it briefly. Uh, don't forget this that set of skill, um, skill sets. Uh, let me move on. So what do you need to do? Um, identify and focus on your goals. So what exactly do I want to do? And that goal does not need to be as specific as I want to be an energy lawyer. Uh, that's not, you know, you don't need to be as specific about it at this stage of your career. So what areas am I interested in? Do I like IT? Do I like entertainment? Uh, do I like intellectual property? But I, I should say that for all of you that want to practice, that want to get involved in corporate practice, it is fundamental that you must understand, I, I think, corporate law. So you must understand the basics of uh, uh, companies' law. You must understand the basis of basics of measures and acquisition. I would even say the basics of finance, because as an energy lawyer, for example, my clients are interested in acquiring uh, other businesses. I need to know corporate law. I need to. My clients are companies, so they need to make filings. My clients will need to finance their, their operations, so I need to understand a little bit of finance. So those things must be there. You need to read as widely as possible, and reading widely also means reading outside of the law. Don't think about only reading your law books. Uh, those things are important, but also go outside of law. And I would say read and listen to daily um, what's happening in the news, not just in Nigeria, but outside in the world as well. You've got to track your progress and measure your success and pitfall. And I'll talk to you about a little bit about a tool that you can use, which the SBL has developed uh, uh, for that. Uh, look for potential opportunities. Uh, and I think one of the things that is also very, very critical is developing a network of contacts and resources. So 
and the relationships that you build, uh, not just with your seniors, but also with your colleagues will be critical for you. So there are many of us that practice in this area of energy law. We are all, uh, a number of us, we are, we are very good for it. I, if I have an issue that I am not clear about, uh, there are a few people that I'll call. I'll call Dayo Kusami, for example, of Templars, or Yemisi Awunuga. Uh, sometimes I'll call uh, Olayemi Ayenichi, who is now the uh, uh, legal advisor of NUPRC. I have this issue. This is what I think. What do you think? Um, they are my contemporaries, they're my peers. Uh, and some of them are actually uh, uh, perhaps a few years uh, behind me at the back. But we deal with these issues day by day. And, you know, uh, you know, I'm not a preacher, but as the Bible says, iron sharpens iron, means that you can get knowledge and skills, particularly from your peers. So, so identify your peers that are uh, good in other areas or good in areas that you're working in and make sure that you connect with them. You give to them and, you know, you can receive from them as well. Um, you, you need to know what skills that you need. And again, the competency framework that I want to talk to you about uh, will also help you to do that. Uh, some tips. Um, you've got to, ultimately, uh, you're going to pick an area. Um, ultimately, because we are getting into the world of specialization, you know, even in uh, IT law, you know, there are some people that are very, very narrow and do only data processing. Uh, uh, data protection uh, law. So you're going to pick an area. So, so it, it may not be in the first year, it may not be in your second year, uh, but after, after a period of time, you're going to pick an area. But even with picking an area, you've got to have versatility, which means that those, the foundations of your practice, kind of trying to know any, almost everything, just having an understanding of it. Uh, it's going to be really important because when the client calls you, sometimes he's not calling you because, oh, I have this particular energy problem uh, with the NUPRs. It might be my company's uh, having an issue uh, with, uh, you know, and this happens a lot now with the EFCC. Uh, and that's, uh, that's not a, 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 a uh, a, a regulatory matter. It's not an oil and gas matter, but yet you need to provide advice. You need to be able to think of it. You need to understand business and industry trends. What, if I am in this area, what is happening in my business? Uh, what is happening in my industry? Uh, and, and one of the things that is free and available to everybody is Google Alerts. So I have Google Alerts set up for things that I'm interested in, for companies that I'm interested in, for people that I'm interested in. Uh, and that sends me an email, uh, sometimes it can be daily, some, sometimes weekly, depending on how you set it, so that you can know um, what, uh, uh, what the industry is doing, just check in time. Uh, some of you may think about going in-house, and, and, and going in-house is not a, it's, it's, it's not a bad idea. Uh, some people go in house to come up, to come back out because it helps them develop a better understanding of the sector that they're dealing with. I know one lawyer, one of the partners in Alupa, everybody, uh, for many many years, spent uh, time uh, uh, in an investment bank. You know, after becoming a senior associate at Alupa, everybody went into an investment bank for a while, doing not doing legal. For an investment bank, but doing investment banking, and he got those skills, and he's back out uh, and now a partner in Africa Equity, and using those skills uh, that he got from investment banking, using it for the practice. You've got to build a brand, um, and building your brand is as simple as it's really about what do you want to be known for, right? And so I tell you, I'm an energy lawyer, and that's really what I am, but I do do other areas. But if you look out for, for me, all you will find, most of what you'll find, probably 99.9% .9 is around uh, the field that I practice. It's deliberate because I want to be known as this person in this area. 
Uh, so when you've picked an area, you've got to build your brand in that area. What does that mean? You write, you speak, you look for opportunities to engage. Look, the guys, the young men, uh, ladies on Twitter, young lawyers who have built a, a reputation of sharing knowledge, the reputation around sharing knowledge with, with young lawyers or with their contemporaries, sometimes on contract law, sometimes on MLE law, in different uh, areas of uh, areas. And from using Twitter to build that, uh, that brand, uh, they've now, they're, they're now well-known and established uh, outside of Twitter and their seniors have, uh, have uh, you know, I've got to know them as well. So be very focused around that. Continuing education, look, every opportunity to learn, you must grab it. And what is interesting about the world today is that there are so many tools that are available to you as a lawyer. All you need to do is a simple Google search. And people are so generous with their information. Uh, law firms are sharing articles. They have blogs. Um, not just Nigerian law firms, law firms across the world. So if you want to learn about anything, you can learn for free. And increasingly, you will see that in our profession, in Nigeria, we also have lots of people sharing information for free and for a, for a price. Um, the ICN is a great example, and they run, they run uh, they've run so many programs. They ran a number last year, and they will continue to run this year. The SBL, every week, uh, we have a business law weekly program on different topics. Um, uh, Speedel has a number of webinars as well. Um, SLP also has another uh, a number of webinars. Attend focused and professional training and events. But also, I would say not just legal professional legal training, but non-legal training as well. So if you pick the sector and the, 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 the uh, general level uh, uh, colleagues in that sector attend training on something, go there, go and learn, because it will help you to build your network. Uh, it will help you to build your network because people are always impressed by lawyers who go out of their way to understand the industry that they are serving. So let me now, I think I have about five minutes left, uh, very quickly talk to you about the competency framework. And so the SBL, uh, the section of business law, uh, which I chair, uh, a few years ago, developed what is called the SBL business law competency framework. And what is, in general, what is a competency framework? It's a document which uh, I defines skills, knowledge, uh, attributes, and behaviors that is expected of professionals in a company or a sector. Uh, what are those skills? What is that level of knowledge? What are those behaviors that you should have to be successful in that sector? And our sector, in our business workshops, we've said it's been developed because there's an increasing emphasis on competence. And those, what you call soft skills, um, what people used to say in, in a very derisive manner, as if you know, soft skills don't matter, they are fundamental to your practice. Uh, and so we have competencies which deal with soft non-legal skills, but also looking at core legal skills in, for now, five practice areas. So we identified practice areas that people typically as business lawyers uh, will have some, uh, some of them from the work in real estate, corporate, banking and finance, corporate dispute resolution, and intellectual property. And what it seeks to do is to define minimum standards of proficiency for associates, senior associates, associate partner, and partner as well. 
So each practice area will identify various knowledge areas. We'll see what are the skills a business lawyer should have? What should they know? What is their minimum level of expertise? So just using uh, real estate uh, as an example, talk about rights and interests in real estate and real property, sales and purchases, uh, and other estate matters, zoning and land use, property development, et cetera, et cetera. What I, let me, I, let me just outline here uh, uh, some of the, uh, the framework, I mean, uh, elements of the framework. So this shows you the non, or some of the non-legal skill sets. And we've talked about uh, uh, a few of them when we're looking at required skills. So uh, an analytical thinking, uh, you know, uh, and for you, as a newly called lawyer, this is where you should be. This is the framework you should be looking at. Uh, you know, analytical thinking, we expect you to have a basic level of analytical thinking, commercial acumen, basic communication skills, basic continuous learning, basic, et cetera. And it goes down the line. Uh, Microsoft Office, presentation skills. Presentation skills for you as a young lawyer, is meant to be intermediate. Obviously, integrity is meant to be intermediate as well. So there is a certain level. And what the, the competency framework, and you see that as you grow as a lawyer, as you move from a junior associate to an associate, senior associate, this, the, the skill level increases. Uh, you know, and by the time that you are a partner, you are expected to be an expert in this area. You're expected to be a leader, someone that is recognized uh, in this area. So what I've tried to do, uh, just bear with me a second. I think I need to erase all these things. Thank you. Uh, so this is you know, a description I'm gonna take um, I will take two of them. I'll take communication skills and, uh, and what is expected of you as a, as a junior lawyer. So let's start with communication skills. And, and what, does, what does communication skills mean? It says it's the ability to interpret complex technical legal issues into comprehensible advice, I advice that someone can understand, which is practical and based on a thorough understanding of the reality of the current situation. So the understanding of the reality of the current situation is not a legal thing. It's, you know, it's that business awareness, right? Can communicate effectively with business colleagues. So, and communicating effectively with business colleagues is, please do not use Latin phrases in your opinions to business colleagues. They don't understand it. And this air of putting mystery around our, uh, around our work, by right? mystifying it with uh, Latin and other kind of phrases uh, is, is, you know, is that era I think is long gone. You can communicate effectively with business colleagues and other stakeholders at different levels using the appropriate level of detail and language. Appropriate level of detail. Nobody, as an MD, as a CEO, as a director, I do not want to see a 20-page opinion. It's just too long for me. It's too long for me. And if you're going to write a 20-page opinion, you have to have an executive summary that that tells me what the key points are, because that's what I'm going to read. You, so what is basic? You communicate clearly. That means I can understand you. You communicate accurately. That means that what you're saying is right. Uh, you communicate confidently. You are assured that what you're saying is right. And you communicate concisely. You don't go 
overboard and talk for a long period of time and go round and round the circle. And you communicate in a timely manner, meaning I need this from you today, I get it from you today. You listen well, you ask the right questions uh, so that you can gather the information that is required and then you can adapt your behavior and communication style to suit the context and the audience. So you look at who you are speaking to when you are communicating. And then obviously you understand the basic nuances uh, and grammatical constructs. So how do I communicate in a clear way? So that, that, that kind of gives you on the communication skills and what you are expected as a, as a, as a, as a new lawyer. Um, so Bena, do I still have time? Uh, um, if you need more time, you, you can take another five minutes. Um, okay, so let me let me just I'll deal with discipline. Thank you, thank you, Tobina. Discipline is able to stick the course, stick to the course, especially in the face of challenges. Consistent and reliable. Consistency and reliability is so critical if you want to. Um, if you want to be appreciated by your, your senior associates, your associate, whoever is supervising you, your ability to be consistent uh, and reliable, i.e., I call on you, I know you will be there. You, it's not that your phone is um, somewhere far away. Um, that is critical. Um, and use a variety of ways to get things done. Your focus is to make sure that things get done. For you, as a young lawyer, you have a can-do attitude. That means they don't, when a challenge comes, the first thing is, oh, this cannot happen. It's like, okay, so how can I make it happen? It may not be able to happen this, it may not happen this way, but it can happen this other way. How can I make it happen? You find a way to overcome obstacles, frustration or constraints in order to achieve the assigned task or responsibility. That is what is expected of you as a, as a new uh, uh, lawyer. Um, so very quickly, this tool can help you as a business lawyer to chart your career path. So you first use it to identify what gaps do I have? When I look at myself, that's on that matrix and that framework, am I operating at the level that is expected of me as an associate in a, in a, a corporate law firm? And if I don't have that, that skill, how do I address it by training by myself, looking for training opportunities outside of my firm, making sure that my firm provides, when my firm provides training opportunities, I can jump on it and I jump on it. Um, and then you can use it to chart your career path. So you go back to that, that tool and say, how am I doing in communication? How am I doing with discipline? You assess yourself and use it as a way uh, to look at what's next. And what you have to do is not just um, meet the level that you are supposed to to be on. You have to work so that the level, the next level and the next level, you're already charting your course towards that. So quick, and, and that, that kind of brings to the end of that, quick uh, word on the sections, section on business law, as you know, we are the section for corporate lawyers. And I should mention that the new Nigerian Bar Association constitution actually requires all members of the Nigerian Bar Association to join one of the sections. And you can join any of these three, you can join. So, but if you are interested in corporate law, uh, section of business law is a section for you. Uh, the section of legal practice is uh, more focused on advocacy. 
uh, whilst the section on public interest and development law is focused on public interest matters, human rights matters, uh, and matters re related to development, uh, development of the economy as well. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much uh, to uh, the section. Uh, thank you very much to, to the ICID, to Tubena. Thank you very much to the president of the Nigerian Bar Association. It's really been a pleasure chatting with all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dioye. Um, brilliant, brilliant presentation. Nothing less than what I expected. Um, I don't can't see any other panelists on board today, but I'll just say that it's interesting all the points that you raised and the way you walked through your your entire paper. Um, I, I I particularly like the fact that you started by distinguishing between an, a solicitor and an advocate. And I'll just make a quick comment before we go to the, the questions that we have in the Q&A box. Please, I'll ask the guests to put their questions in the Q&A box so we can take them. Um, I, I've always wondered why when Nigeria decided to start its own uh, qualification process for practice in Nigeria, they, we didn't have the distinction between barristers and solicitors as you have in, in England. And interestingly, but I think it's a huge point, and I like the point that you mentioned versatility, because the fact that you're allowed to practice uh, as a barrister and a solicitor helps you to express yourself either way if you have the aptitude. And I, and I have quite a lot of respect for those lawyers who can present themselves on occasion as corporate lawyers and at the same time as litigators. So, you know, and, and I think that you can borrow something either way from uh, practicing across the field. Uh, and because our market is not as um, sophisticated or, or, or mature as perhaps some other markets in the world, it would serve a young lawyer a very good purpose to try and get as much experience and knowledge of both areas of the practice field as, as one can get. But but thank you very much, uh, Dioye, for a very great presentation. I think we've got two questions in Q&A. Um, so one says, good day, sir. Is it possible to be a litigation lawyer and subsequently switch to being a corporate lawyer? Very, very possible. There are lots of people who have that uh, background. Uh, I'll give an example, Aswe Godalo. Uh, Aswe Gudalu wanted to be just a litigation lawyer. Uh, he still says that he, 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 you know, he was looking forward to being a, an SEA and, and all that. And he changed. He moved from uh, uh, being a litigator. Uh, he moved into to proper practice. And that's what he's well known for today. Another example is Kenetin. Kenetin used to be a litigator uh, in Bawa and Gudalu. He's managing partner of Bawa and Gudalu today. And um, all he does is, is corporate law work. He doesn't do any litigation anymore. So you can uh, you can do that. And there are lots of people who, um, as Tubena said, um, do both. They go to court, uh, they serve corporate clients in court, but also give uh, uh, corporate uh, commercial advice as, uh, as, as solicitors as well. So you can choose uh, I think what's important about what's available to you as a Nigerian lawyer is that you can do, you can focus on uh, just being a barrister or just being a solicitor or doing both. And you can do well in either way, but you know, uh, it, 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 it is your choice. So the second is in a corporate world, law firms and other firms are reluctant to hire new hands. So what happens when the law firm which you left which you felt would give you a push doesn't employ you. <laughs> Where exactly is the first place to start? Law firms, tax organizations, where exactly? And the second question from the individual is, everyone in the profession talks about brevity. How brief can, um, uh, can an M&A agreement be? What's the guideline for the, this brevity talked about? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, look, there are some documents that cannot avoid being, uh, being uh, you know, 
we've worked on 100, 200 page uh, contracts. Uh, it is what it is. But I think the important thing is to make sure that you're not doing more than what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, because even me as a young lawyer, I, I prided myself in how large my, my documents were. What I should be really, what I should be thinking about is what value is this document to the client? So there are contracts that they will be long, but as long as each clause that is there is serving a purpose, you're fine. What I uh, don't, ad what I advise against is, uh, you know, putting things there as fillers or because you want to look like uh, you have a large document or you want your client to appreciate uh, that you've put in a lot of work uh, into this and therefore you have to have a large, uh, large document. And I, I would also emphasize brevity in particular in relation to things like emails or letters um, because they, those can almost always be, be shorter than uh, you, you want them to be or you, you normally uh, make. Uh, so make sure that you're not putting any fillers that are totally unnecessary. And as an example of something that is totally unnecessary, the use of my, or use of totally in that sentence was unnecessary. If you said unnecessary, it was sufficient. That's good. Well, the first limb to that, or the first question there, would you want that in the court? In the corporate world, law firms and other firms are reluctant to hire new hands. So what happens yeah. where the okay. law firm, which so is I mean, I, but yes. I remember that, look, to be honest, we're, we're facing a really challenging economy and I, and I don't know that it is reluctance to hire, but it's ability, it is about the ability to, to uh, meet up uh, with obligations. Um, I think that we have lots of people in our country, um, but we focus very narrowly on, uh, I would say, certain parts of the economy. So uh, Lagos, in terms of corporate law, Lagos, Abuja, uh, Port Harcourt, perhaps, and maybe Kwame. Um, but the, the ability to develop uh, corporate law practice in other jurisdictions in, uh, in the East, in Aba, in Abia, uh, you know, that ability is significant. We don't want the, uh, the guy who is manufacturing uh, shoes in, in, in Aba to come to Port Harcourt to get corporate law advice. He, he must be able to go to somebody uh, within that locale, uh, someone in Aba branch that is able to support him and give uh, uh, corporate law advice in that area. Uh, and, and likewise, you know, uh, if you're if you're doing anything, uh, you should have more than enough lawyers to support you from business law perspective. Uh, but it is challenging. Uh, I think if you know that this is an area that you want to focus on, uh, you have you have to keep looking out for the right opportunities. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and building your networks. I would say. Uh, involvement in things like this, uh, coming to bar uh, association or branch meetings uh, is also another area because you get to meet people and perhaps you know they, there might be somebody that can help you. Thanks a lot, DOA, for that. And, and I, I think that it's a bit presumptive now to say that um, they, they are the reluctance to hire new hands. I'd like to talk more about the opportunities that are that are available today in the market. And, and just to say to the person who raised the question that there's a lot of uh, mobility now as far as employment is concerned. And you find a lot of Niger a lot of opportunities being created by people moving out of Nigeria or going other places to work or in the corporate world and all of that, creating a lot of spaces. In my firm, for instance, Last year, about 10 people left the firm to travel abroad for different opportunities, either to go to school or to work. Um, as far as young youth couples are um, in, uh, concerned, I think we have more youth couples this year. We have about 10 than we've ever had before. 
So, wow. so there are actually, there are, yeah, there are opportunities out there to that. I know most um, firms are hiring young people and training them. So, so you have to be active in the market and look out for opportunities. And I think also the point that Dioya makes about, you know, the latitude that's allowed you as a young lawyer, as any lawyer in Nigeria, even to engage in your own practices, wherever you are. I often say that programs like this afford you the opportunity to gain basic training and also to know those in the industry who could help you grow. There are a lot of people you can shadow. So we often use the um, we often use the example of Onicha, for instance, that has the highest level of trademarks, but very few IP lawyers. And I'm sure that Dioye will tell you that most of his clients has never really met them. He doesn't know them. So if you're in Onicha or, or, or anywhere in the world, once you have the expertise and you know how to put yourself out there and make people know that you have those skills, I think the opportunities will also come your way. Uh, thank you very much, Dioye, uh, for a very brilliant session. I know the other, uh, the guys who will take the other uh, session are already here, but I must say that um, this session has been very educative. I can see the comments that are coming through on them. Um, I, for those who listen to Dioye, and I'm sure from the beginning, you will see a very big similarity in the work that we do, similarity between what his presentation today and the one on what the judges expect of you in court that was done by Dr. Dimba yesterday, but very instructive, very educative, very detailed. And I, I must say to you that um, the paper is even uh, is something that most lawyers should be interested in. And I've received calls from senior lawyers who are actually on this call telling me that they've been, <laughs> that it's been quite engaging. So oh, thank you very much for this. Well, let me, let me thank you and uh, thank you for inviting me. I should also thank uh, my colleague who's here, Latif Bamdele, who helped uh, me in preparing the slides. So that's a young lawyer who's, you know, on top of his, uh, on top of his feet. And um, I can't go without uh, selling the section of business law, a great section. We focus on business law practice. If you want to understand what's going on in business law, you need to join the section and you need to interact with, uh, with our colleagues in the section. So mbsbl.org. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually my section too. And I must say that the section on business law is a pioneer um, section as far as training and development is concerned. Um, they, there's a lot going on at the moment, the business law weekly, and a lot of training coming out of the stables of the SBL. And I just encourage lawyers at their spare time, we must find time to train, to seek knowledge, to equip ourselves for what we do every day. Uh, the, the, the economy is tough, and it could be the least knowledge that you pick up from any session that makes a difference in, on the, in your bottom line for any given period. So thank you very much, Dioye. Um, keep it up at the SBL and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you. bye. All right. So now we're going over to the next uh, segment for today, which is the second um, session. Uh, the second session is actually the last session in the series. And it is expected to be very engaging because we have two very uh, dynamic and intelligent young men who will be taking us through today's session. Um, because we've eaten into their time by a bit, I'm not gonna go into an elaborate um, introduction of them, but they are gonna be talking about the emerging lawyer and the path to the future. Um, Mr. Toby Adebowale is a, a, a young lawyer a very good friend of mine, his immediate past president, a uh, past chairman of the Young Lawyers Forum of the Nigerian Bar Association, very experienced young man who's had significant practice experience in firms like Georgie Tomi and Co. in uh, um, uh, Banwani Godalo, and is now a corporate lawyer in the private sector. Uh, I'm happy to have him here. Um, the, his co-speaker today is Mr. Montasi 
Adamu, another very dynamic young lawyer who happens to be the chairman of the Young Lawyers Forum uh, currently. He's a man who, a young man who not only has done quite a bit as a, a, a legal practitioner, but is also working in one of the top four accounting firms at the moment. So very versatile young man also. So it is my pleasure to introduce to you. Um, I don't know how we start. Toby, do we start with you? Toby, are you leading? Um, um, my chair, good afternoon. How are you guys going to play it? <laughs> um, I think we can start with the chairman. Uh, Cut the demands that we allow the chairman to, to have precedence. Okay, fantastic. Muntasi. Ah, um, Muntasi, you're well decked up. I can see your <laughs> headphone. So, great yes, stuff. Yes. All ready to um, go. All right. Um, delegates, my pleasure to yield the floor to Muntasi Adamu. Thank you very much. That's the floor, yes. Um, thank you very much, sir. Uh, once again, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Monica Sero Adamu. Just like uh, Mr. Tobena mentioned, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Um, yes, um, I'm, I'm happy also that I'm, I'm doing this together with Toby. Toby is the leader past chairman of the YLF and of course he's a brother and a very dear friend. So the topic for today of our, our own session is basically to look at um, the emerging areas of the law and where we, we, we definitely going to like share our own experience as well, personal experience and those areas we believe and the young leaders can also take advantage of. Sorry for my uh, my visuals. I'm somewhere far in the northeast, yeah, for a project. So that's why my connection is a bit low. Yes. Um, for me, I think that some of the areas that I have highlighted, I'm, I'm going to speak on. Uh, there are like six, which I'm sure when to be um, stone when it's to be stone to speak, I'm sure Toby also highlight some of these areas as well. So one of them, I I believe. Um, let me just start first off with my own experience. Yes, so I, I was called to Dubai in 2017, yes, and I did my youth service in Abuja, the law firm of um, Mahmoud Magaji, now of Nigeria. From there. I moved to Lagos where I, I had the privilege of working with at, um, George Tomia and partners as well. Where I was seconded to a disco, a co disco to be exact. Of course, I was there for, for about two years, two and a half years. From there, I moved to one of the big accounting, big four, as we call them, audit and consulting firms globally, which is called PwC Private House Coopers. I was there for about one year, six months before. November last year, I moved to Esther Young, another big four as well, where I'm a student associate as well. So I, some of the, this, this is basically my own experience as a person and how I've moved from being just a lawyer to moving into the field, and which has offered me the opportunity to actually um, advise clients in different areas from in both energy, in the FMCG, agribusiness, you know, government. I've worked on a couple of work for the public sector regards to talking about government as well. So uh, I think these are some of the things that I've done personally to be able to like, um, within my short career, try and actually follow my own passion, my desire towards being a, not just, a, not just a lawyer, that, not just any lawyer, just go to court only, but look at different areas of how I can give a specialty for myself. And, and, and um, those areas that I believe are quite germane that young lawyers can also look into. One of them includes healthcare law. The healthcare law, of course, we know currently there's due to there's hype about personal lifestyle and healthcare, not just in Nigeria but globally, right? So, and this is one area that I think a lot of young lawyers can take advantage of, right? We have people, we have people, you know, registering to, to. Okay, please. Okay, I think uh, confirm you can hear me now. Okay, there are different areas of the law that you can actually take advantage of. And um, one of them, like I said, is area of healthcare law. People are so passionate about um, about personal lifestyle now and everything. So this is one area that I believe, you know, you as a young lawyer can choose to cover a niche for yourself in the area of healthcare. You know, you can go there and you think of things that you can really provide specialty. You know, the issue of um, um, different kind of medical medical negligence that can happen in the process. Right? How can how as a young lawyer how are you, 
position yourself when it comes to the area of healthcare? How can you provide services to um, to both both um, to, to best patients and also even to the companies as well? We are seeing a health tech healthcare companies coming up that you know that people can just sit down from within the comfort, comfort of your home to just like um, speak to a doctor. Get get a medic a, a medicine prescribed to you that will be sent to your to your home. You know, so these are things that you can look at it and see how, whether you whether you're interested in the area of healthcare law and how you can um, um, you know have you know equip yourself with what you need actually to, to excel in that regard. Another area is the area of um, intellectual property. Of course, we know what's happening here of intellectual pro intellectual property, right? A lot of people would need um, to ensure that. Uh, the inventions are safe, you know, from um, copyright and everything. So it's one area that, as a young lawyer, I think is one area that you can actually cap on it for yourself, you know. Then, aside, aside that one, of course, no issue of tax law. Recently, or as, as early as last year, um, I know there was issue between River State Government and also if, and, and um, FRS about, um, about um, was about who should be the right body to, to collect VAT, right? So different areas, companies are thinking of how they can they can they can limit their tax exposure. So these are areas that I believe you can definitely have a niche for yourself. If you're interested in tax law, you can know that many lawyers, law firms are doing so well within, within around around the areas of tax. Identify these people and see how you can actually either reach out to them for mentorship, you know, and you know if there are different trainings online that you can do, that kind of books that you can read on tax that I believe can actually expose you to a lot of things actually regarding tax. One area I believe young lawyers can also take advantage of. Another area is issue of sport and entertainment. All of us we know what's happening around sport and entertainment. You know, so this one area that I believe, you know, um, what do you call it? We have um, we have um, sport agents, right? We have, especially those that watch football, you know how much agents, if you assign a, if you assign a player, how much the player would charge, you know, in terms of drafting the contract and everything. These are areas that you can actually cover to niche for yourself. Look at, if you go to entertainment, you can see people are endorsement, artists are getting endorsements every day. How can you place yourself in a better position that when it comes to, when this when these artists are looking for lawyers that will draft agreements for them, contracts with, with uh, for endorsement that you're there, you're the person that they reach out to. I know one law firm that does look at, for instance, I'm sure some of us are aware of um, Boba Jodwa, who is more like um, um, the video's lawyer. You know, look, I can see what these are the areas that he, you know, not just for the video, he provides the sort of services to other artists within that space as well. So these are areas that if you're interested in sport or in similar law, the areas I believe. Um, you can also take advantage of really and see how you can yeah, do well for yourself. Issue of cyber security, something that is quite um, one area that I believe young lawyers can also take advantage of. No issue of cyber bullying that's happening, how people do the issue of cyber bullying and Nigeria. So, these are things that are areas that I think young lawyers can really take advantage of really and, and cap a need for themselves because there's a need for specialty. You can't just do everything on your own. You should be known for something. That's what's one thing I believe. And, and I'm sure Toby would um, also add. His own bit as well. So be either, so you can come go ahead and also speak on this stuff. Thank you. Mm. All right, thank you, Montasir. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I must start by appreciating Mr. Tobiene Rojiku, Chairman of the MBA Institute for Continuing Legal Education, for the opportunity and indeed for putting this together. Uh, it is one thing that many young lawyers really need and many of us who started out in the profession without the benefit of this type of forum uh, felt that we, we really needed to fix this. And when Mr. Tobena raised the idea with me, I, I was absolutely in support of it. So uh, I must say kudos to him and the ICAD for uh, putting this together and for bringing it uh, uh, to reality. Uh, now delving into the topic for this session, which is, uh, young lawyer and the path to the future. Uh, I'm just going to now, you know, sort of build on what Montasir has already done, which is to lay the foundation. He has talked about the various areas where uh, young lawyers can begin to look at in terms of trying to carve a niche for uh, themselves and also the different uh, realities you might have to contend with. So in, in going forward, I'm, I have just a, a few slides to to show you, um, I'm going to talk about some of the 
um, pros and um, challenges you might um, have to deal with and then uh, look at a few more things. Okay, so just uh, a second. And, uh, okay. So I, I believe you can see my screen now. Yeah, it's up. Okay, thank you. So, um, I mean, we go back to the basics. For you to be here, I mean, the session was primarily advertised to persons who were called recently, perhaps uh, late 2021 and um, sometime in the middle and the end of 2022. Um, but I imagine that we also have a couple of other people uh, who fall within the category of um, young lawyers here joining us. Uh, I mean, so typically the MBA's definition uh, by the MBA constitution is that anyone who falls within the one to seven years post qualification or post call uh, year, as, as we call it, uh, is, is, is a young lawyer. And, um, you know, as the MBA and the Supreme Court define uh, that post call year, it begins from the first year you, you pay your bar practice fee. So uh, someone who was called in 2022. Uh, is deemed to be one year at the bar, even though it's, it's not yet, um, for instance, November 2023, by which time the person would have clocked the calendar year at the bar. Um, that is not so much of an issue. Uh, so I'll move to the next one, which is how employers define who a young lawyer is. I'm sure you've had the benefit of listening to various employers in the course of um, this series, uh, and you perhaps might have gained some insights, drawn your own inferences and conclusions on how they approach employment, uh, recruitment, and their perception of, of young lawyers. So I'm just perhaps going to offer my own personal perspective um, to, to it and add to it. Um, employers really, I mean, of course, look at the year you start out, uh, uh, maybe pay some attention to the calendar year, but then they are also particularly, you know, focused on how much you know, what you know, and then that that, that determines uh, the kind of responsibilities you're entrusted with as time goes on. Um, and so you may not want to limit yourself uh, by thinking that, oh, I'm still young in age or um, it's not so long that I was called and then shy away from responsibilities. Employers are really looking for people who, are going to step up, you know, uh, take tasks uh, and lead on those tasks as, as though uh, they were, you know, experts in, in, in that domain. So what this means really is as soon as you have the opportunity, uh, do your research, put yourself uh, to the task and try and quickly uh, upscale so that you become uh, respected within, within, within the circles or within the um, office as someone who does who gets the job done. Now, it does, this does not mean that uh, you may not feel some pressure when you come afresh uh, to a certain task. Um, th that pressure is normal, it's typical. But one thing you need to uh, do is make sure you put in your best effort, uh, seek help where you need to speak with other uh, persons who are perhaps intermediate. Um, associates get some support where you need to ask your colleagues but one thing is one thing you really need to do is apply yourself and where i'm driving at is this you might then find soon enough that um, someone who was called to the bar uh, say four years ago um, can rise up to become a senior associate within um, a particular law firm um, in their fifth year whereas someone who has um, I mean, was called say five, six years ago, uh, may still be uh, struggling to get the nod uh, for that kind of promotion. Uh, one thing that typically is the difference is this, the ability to take initiative, the ability to, you know, bold, to be bold and take responsibility and, and step up to the challenge when there is one. Um, that is often the difference. Now, we are not all gifted in the same way in terms of retention, um, um, instincts to identify issues and all that, but there, there are really um, uh, and, and no issues or concepts or segments or areas of, of, of law that when you uh, put in more work and, and apply yourself that you cannot master. So one thing is 
if you, if you identify certain uh, gaps, um, for instance, as Dr. Adeo mentioned earlier, when you identify gaps, you try to plug, plug those gaps. If you identify areas where you need to spend more time uh, to um, build your capacity, then you need to quickly do that so that that way you, you know, tend to come up the, the ladder quicker than, than um, or some other people might. And then this segues into my uh, next uh, bullet point, which is how you define it. Now, as there, there's a joke that um, I sometimes tell my friends uh, that at, at, at the time I was appointed uh, the chairman of the Young Lawyers Forum, and I was about you know, stopping to see myself as a young lawyer. So it took me some element of um, uh, resistance. Uh, <laughs> um, I had to overcome some element of resistance within myself uh, to accept that responsibility because I, I was starting to, you know, um, lead on, on some engagements uh, within the office where I was. And I, I was practically trying to, you know, step up to, to be to interact and you know interface with clients and colleagues from other law firms without thinking oh I was just uh, four or five years at the bar you know um, and that is one thing about how you see yourself how do you define yourself as as a young lawyer do you see yourself as somebody who is just going to be spoon fed and held by the hand for a long period of time I mean I've seen I've been in certain for for uh, where people you know define a young lawyer as somebody who is a lawyer up until the time they are called to the um, they are elevated to the rank of silk uh, become an SM and some other person says oh up until the person is ten years post school uh, they are still a young lawyer whereas uh, when I was four years post school because of the kind of engagement I, I was starting to uh, lead and the kind of activities I was involved in, both within and outside the firm, I was starting to feel like maybe I'm no more as a young lawyer, you know. So um, you need to uh, see yourself growing up. You need to see yourself as more than just what other people uh, call you, uh, um, um, especially when people tend to, I mean, sometimes you can be in an environment where people tend to look down on, on you by the mere fact that um, you're a young lawyer. I will come to that later on. So uh, one thing is define, define yourself um, and in, in defining yourself, you really should be aiming for the top and, and, and to be the best version of yourself. So I'm, I'm going to then move on to what the present is. And this is um, just an, uh, an analysis of what, what is good about being a young lawyer and what kind of challenges you, you face. Um, I mean, being a young lawyer presents you with some latitude it's seen as a learning curve. Yeah, everybody sort of uh, sees you as somebody who is in the firm, who, who is just starting out and is there to learn. So you are probably going to cut some slack on some issues. Um, some more people are probably going to offer you help or, and reach out to guide you through whatever activities are or task or assignments you, you have. You have that benefit. And then also, I mean, when especially when you're just starting out your first year, second year, you have this flexibility of dreams. And this is what, what I mean by that. Um, there are some of us who tend to have almost like disparate um, aspirations or, or we, we, we sort of feel like we are good in different things at about the same time. So I, for instance, I was very active in what we call the Mutant Mock Society in my university. I liked litigation or I, I aspired to be a litigator. I, I liked the advocacy. We, I participated in various competitions and I liked that argument, drafting briefs and, and, and all that. But at some point as well, I, I got introduced to energy law um, um, by, by, by circumstance. Um, I took, it, took a course in it in the university. And then when I joined Georgia Premium Partners, I saw in practical terms what it entailed and I still got more interested in it. Um, the beautiful thing though at the time was, I mean, in that particular firm, we're allowed to, you know, work across different areas. So I was able to go to court and come back and, and deal with contracts. I was, I was um, juggling both sides. Now, what, what I'm trying to point out here is that at that point when you're just starting out, you can try different things. You, I mean, there's still some time ahead of you to uh, then later on focus on a particular thing. But as, as a young lawyer, there's still that chance to be flexible. You can uh, follow your interest in different areas. Perhaps 
if your family is not too strict, you can ask for the opportunity to work across different areas. And there are even some firms like B and I, for instance, where they rotate you in your first step and, and your first and second year, they rotate you across different practice areas. So you, you can test out your aspirations in all these areas and see which one you really like uh, the most and, and then decide on where to, to focus on. Yeah, for the next step, which is uh, multiple career options. Now, um, at, at, at the point when you're starting out, the world, of course, is like your oyster. There's just this wide field ahead of you, and then you can choose what part of what part of the field you want to play on, either as a defender, a midfielder, or, or as a striker. I mean, also subject to the kind of natural talents you, you have. Uh, but at that point in time, I mean, things are still a bit flexible. It might become slightly more difficult when you rise up to start to be as uh, uh, standing in the profession and you suddenly want to switch, you might be thinking that, ah, do I have to go back to the back, um, end of the queue in litigation, for instance, for a promise that you know, he wants to um, do litigation now, or wants to become sick, you might start thinking, uh, where does it start from and, 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 and all that. You know, so when we're still young, we can, we, we, we can look at all the options ahead of us and, and there are probably many of them, uh, we are, we're, we're flexible and, uh, move to different sites and, and, and for sure that. And now um, for something that you know closely aligns with some of the areas that she has identified, the evolving nature of legal practice and emerging areas of profession uh, means that there are many people who are doing new things and you would find that many of these people are young people. Uh, I mean, I've interacted with quite a number of uh, founders in the te technology space, uh, in, in financial technology, fintech, and a couple of other types of technology, health tech, tech um, legal tech, and agri tech, among others. You will find that a lot of them are people between the ages of 21 and 25. Like, I've met quite a number of 24 year olds who have done two rounds of seed raise and all that, and, and are possibly worth like $3 million <laughs> personally now, you know, as, as young tech founders. Now, being young means you are some, somewhere within this category right now. You can easily make friends with people who are starting uh, ventures in, in different areas, and you, that sort of helps you to, uh, you know, make uh, something, I mean, what, what, what we call marketing or, or, or finding briefs, um, uh, making rain, uh, as, as we call it. So if you're going to build your um, ability to bring in clients and all that, socialize and all that, it also helps that you are within the range, age range of people who are doing new things and you can easily find out what is new, what is happening, and, and also uh, connect with people in, in all these areas, tech, sports, entertainment, and the likes. Um, so I'm just going, going to touch briefly on the other side. Now, for the challenges, what are the downsides? Uh, many times, some, some young lawyers say, oh, if only they told me what this profession was like, or um, I'm going to tell my younger ones, don't bother studying law this and that because of some of the issues they are now dealing with that they never need to deal with. Well, I mean, um, it's probably why we have um, sessions like this so that you can have the benefit of of, of hindsight being provided by people who have gone through where you are now. So some of the things that we have dealt with, I mean, though we are still relatively young as well, uh, um, one is competition. As uh, for instance, Mr. Desmond Ogba might, might have um, told you uh, when during his own session, you're competing, you're, you're working in a very competitive space. and. Lawyers, I mean, you have to be be, be at your best game for you to uh, get invited to the uh, best law firms, for you to be entrusted with work by um, a client, for you to be entrusted with work even within a law firm by your seniors and, and all of that. So one thing though this challenge does for you is you it helps you to push yourself. So you are constantly reading and researching and trying to be a better version of yourself. So it's not entirely a pattern, but you can admit, we can all admit that it is quite a competitive space. Perception by senior lawyers, this is one thing I'm passionate about talking. Um, I'm, 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 I, I like to talk about. Um, for certain types of practices, I mean, I, I try not to be, I'll try not to be too specific. You will come across some remarks now and then 
where people think that um, you are just another piece of furniture in the office space. Um, you are just uh, there to you know make up the numbers. They don't necessarily think you have a lot to offer intellectually or in terms of uh, addressing issues. So you if you, you you hear a lot of stories if you talk to people. I mean, people who cannot be entrusted. I mean, or it's not like they cannot, but somehow their their seniors do not just trust them to go move motion. So they, they can work for two, three years um, in a particular law firm and do not have any record of appearing alone in, in court or moving um, motions, handling certain types of files or cases. I mean, you, you can have all, all sorts of stories like that. Though there are some other places where this is not necessarily the case, but this is one thing I have an issue with um, as far as the legal profession is concerned. We seem to have um, sort of a preponderance, a majority of people who tend to look down on young lawyers are so they're just, they're just there. Their, their opinions are not necessarily sought for on critical matters. And we see this even within the MBA itself. Uh, sometimes there are, there are situations where you are going to you know, wonder, oh, why is the young person not involved in this? Why is the young person not you know, uh, being asked to contribute to this? But thankfully, we have some uh, wonderful people like Mr. Tobina, who definitely um, tries to incorporate young people into everything he's doing. And, and he, for instance, gave me the opportunity to join the NBA when, when I was in my first year of, of practice. Um, he invited me to participate in something I was doing at NBA Lagos and, and then has remained a mentor all along. Um, so you might come across this. And one way to handle this is to remain respectful, but um, as much as possible, try to um, get your points across um, re respectfully. Uh, do not look down on yourself. Uh, and that's one thing I, I, I stress to my colleagues, um, especially when, um, um, when we're talking about elections and, and what have you. You're probably new to the system, you'll come up, you'll get to see this later, but it's important I, I sort of prepare your mind for it. Uh, you, especially during that period, you may come across people who just see you as, oh, uh, numbers and they are not going to necessarily seek your mind or your input on things they just think oh, they can invite you to a party and a couple of other things that do not necessarily you know look like they respect your your your, your or value your mind your your mental and intellectual contributions on issues uh, so you have to prepare yourself for that but one one solution is um, have some self-respect have some self-respect this is very important interact with um, seniors cordially and respectfully, but also respect yourself um, and com comport yourself accordingly. Um, remuneration is something that is an issue. Uh, a lot of um, young lawyers in the market may not be earning what they think they should be earning. When I was chairman and um, we did a survey, we found out that the numbers were really poor across the country. And thankfully the MBA uh, looked into it and a committee was set so the, the report of that committee is now being implemented. Uh, so we hope that things will change. Though some of the concern really is also about the economy and uh, the situation of things in the country. But then uh, we feel that some minimum standards can be set across uh, the country for in terms of regulation. And we hope to, to see this uh, fully implemented in due course. Uh, that is also close to the next challenge, which is lack of uniform standards for working environment and welfare standards. So you see in some places, uh, there are no basic uh, provisions for uh, research for in terms of um, uh, stipends when, when people go to court. So the lawyer is dragging bag and um, case files and his wig and gown on a bike and a couple of you know other other not so pleasant scenarios like that or lawyers being um, employed without employment letters, no pension benefits and a couple of other things that they should you know, typically have. There, there are presently no uniform standards for that, but again, this is also something that is now being, being looked into and, and we hope that uh, this will be fully addressed uh, soon enough. But these are some of the issues that are at play. Now, I'm going to now talk about what is changing and which is really why we're looking to the future. Uh, some of them have been touched on by Montasir. But one of the four things I just want to add to that is that um, increasingly uh, clients and law firms or employers are looking for lawyers who sort of bring more to the table. Um, that is what we call the more for less demand. The client wants to pay, I mean, all, 
almost the same fee for the service of a business analyst and a, a legal analyst uh, um, and a legal drafter at the same time. So if you can pick up more skills um, in addition to what you've been taught in law school, I absolutely recommend. And, and this is not even about saying if you can, I think you should. Uh, so um, Mr. Albert talked about commercial awareness in the session, and this cannot be retreated enough, cannot be emphasized enough. So some of the practical ways to help you uh, 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 build up in this area is what I'm, I'm now concerned about uh, bringing to force. So I subscribe to a couple of uh, newsletters. Um, so because I'm practically uh, or I'm primarily in the energy industry, though I do some work in, in tech as well, I'm primarily in the energy industry. I subscribe to newsletters for, for the energy sector um, um, in Nigeria and uh, globally. So I have a couple of um, newsletters I read almost every day when they send um, analysis of various issues happening in the energy industry, right start energy, and then if you, if you subscribe to, um, you know, important is part like business day, you also get to read in, um, useful stuff almost every time. If you're looking to upskill in the area of finance, if you um, subscribe to Finimize, you get uh, regular tips on um, on issues in, in, in the financial sector and fintech and a lot of other things like that. Now, depending on the area you're looking to, you know, build more skills and capacity, in, you may need to do some some more research, and that is very important. So you need to be able to act as a as a as a as a business analyst, analyze the business, understand the business of the client, understand the issues of the client. Or if you're, for instance, uh, providing um, uh, support on on a health. Uh, litigation matter, uh, for instance, negligence. You need to understand the language of, of the hospital. You need to read beyond what the law says uh, to understand how the law applies in different situations. Now, specialization, very important. Um, I haven't said earlier that the market is competitive. One way to then stand out is to create a special portion of the market for yourself. Um, at your stage, I mean, especially when you're just starting out, this is not what we would emphasize, but it's something to have at the back of your mind as you go through different areas. Try to start to begin to think of which of them you would like to build more um, skill and prominence in that can prove useful later on when you, you, you are talking about um, attracting uh, briefs. Now, globalization is probably more of a concern for the employers and bar association. But one thing we also, also need to start to bear in mind is that we are now increasingly in a global village, and there is some level of um, incursion presence of foreign participants in, in our own local domain. So you are not just competing against Abdul and Jamil and Sheon and Ugochuko from um, Uweri, Fauci, uh, Ibadan, and uh, Inagua alone. You are also now starting to think of Jen and Tuan and a couple of other people from France, America, and Britain, uh, who are starting to come together in various forms, either in front of law firms or, or um, uh, with the aid of technology and other things that we're starting to see and, and treaties like the Africa Free Trade Continental Agreement and a couple of other global treaties that there is some international presence coming in. So you need to bear, bear this in mind as, as you prepare for the future, that it's, it's, you're, you're, you're not playing a local game anymore. You, you need to think global, your concern is global and you prepare for, for, for that change and, and that future. Now, what is also changing is the use of technology and its impact across all areas, including uh, the legal space. This is slow in cash and on in Nigeria. I mean, so far, the kind of legal tech we have for now has, has been limited to the software that law firms use to manage time, uh, manage communication, use of um, um, resources, um, um, uploading things and all of that. But if you're also following uh, developments in the artificial intelligence space, you, you see that oh, things are beginning to look up. Um, you, you see chat GPT providing help to people who are drafting agreements and, um, and, and a couple of things. So it might not be too far away in the future where some of these things will be readily available to every um, uh, Nigerian and the, the demand for a lawyer might you know, somewhat reduce. So what then do you do to 
um, compete with this kind of development. It is to build up your, your skills, um, carve a niche for yourself and be so good at it, and then learn how to leverage that technology itself to also boost your own practice. So be visible on, on the places where you need to be visible. Uh, for instance, a couple of us have developed um, softwares that sort of operate like uh, um, uh, on that directories, uh, that's the actual word, that directories. So if you need to sign up on directories to be visible, use LinkedIn uh, for visibility in terms of the content you create, write articles and, and all of that. Use that as well to, to help yourself. Um, in closing, I'm, I'm now going to now narrow down to uh, what you need, what to do and what you need to uh, excel in the future, which is, I mean, of course, so these are some of the things that we have used so far that we have gotten to the stage where we are and we have learned from those we, we have, we've worked with and, and stayed close to, like Mr. Tobina. And so I'm sharing some of these things that we ourselves are also still, you know, learning to adopt and use. Uh, one is focus. We are in, in an increasingly connected age. Perhaps when Mr. Tobena went to law school and when he started practice, um, he probably would need to go into a library uh, to find a particular authority. If you needed a precedent for a contract, you needed to look through the compendium for uh, contract precedents, you know, uh, that, that were published in, in those times, or, you know, something like that. But now everything is online, but so are also the distractions. Um, the way the world is connected sort of you know, uh, reduces the amount of uh, uh, focus we have. So you, you need to consciously uh, train yourself to focus um, on your job and, and get the job done. This is very, very important if you want to do good work consistently, as Dr. Lee emphasized, that you need to be consistent and reliable. If you're going to be able to do that, you need to be able to cut out the noise around you. Uh, one of the key, key uh, tips that somebody once offered <laughs> was that the, the um, airplane mode on your phone is it's probably one of the most helpful tools. Use it. And then a couple of us, you know, try that. There are times that you, you need to just, you know, take a step back from the noise around social media and the internet to focus on doing your work. Now, the topic of focus is also important to me because I have seen its practical um, um, importance. Now, some of the things I mentioned and I will still mention require you um, stretching yourself, so to speak. Uh, you need to you know, learn to socialize, network, meet with people outside of workers, meet friends across different sectors, not necessarily just the people you went to law school and, and currently work in law firms with. You need to, you know, diversify your, your uh, 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 network, so to speak. And a couple of other things that you need to do to, you know, stand out and, and be a lawyer uh, who, who, who is, you know, respected and recognized. But all of these, you know, sort of drain you in one way or the other. Uh, one of the things that you also need to do is, you know, participate in the activities of the NBA, of the Young Bears Forum, which I'm going to come to. But you will need to do these things in moderation, and all of that ties back into focus. Because if you don't do them in moderation, you're going to lose your ability to focus at work, and your quality of work will drop. And then at the end of the day, when your quality of work drops, perhaps you're going to uh, uh, get bad ratings, not be promoted, or even asked to. Uh, take a break or a, a take, take your exit from, from that particular office and, you know, it just defeats the whole purpose of trying to build yourself into, into a better person at work. So, learn to focus, reduce the noise when you need to, uh, use different apps if you, if you need to. I mean, there are certain apps where you can unlock different um, other apps on the phone away for uh, a certain number of hours or use the DND function so that you're able to read and uh, uh, concentrate for four hours or something like that. And there are a couple of books that can also, uh, that you can also look up, uh, Carl Newport or James Clear. They write interesting books on these areas, um, Deep Work, uh, Atomic Habits. They are important books to read. Now, the next one is mentorship. This is one form of mentorship. Uh, so. This is a general form of mentorship, but you may also need to identify uh, people you can, you know, go to more 
often and on a predictable basis. Um, you don't know when the when next ICL is going to organize this kind of session where you meet different lawyers from different fields and offices who will share their um, insights uh, that would then help you. But if you have a particular mentor, you can go to them, you know, for advice and insight on, on different things that you're dealing with on, on a uh, more specific basis. So it's it's helpful to find a mentor or mentors who can who you can talk to. Uh, and one way to find mentors is you know um, approach people, uh, but not necessarily approach them uh, uh, to ask for things. But sometimes you you can. Uh, reach out to people and offer to assist with some something they are doing, and then from there you, you build a relationship and and, and they can, can guide you, especially in the area of in the areas where you are interested in. Now, balanced networking. I think this is just is self-explanatory, but I'll now go go further into it. One of the things that have helped me uh, as a as a young lawyer is that I've been actively involved in the activities of the MBA and the sections of the MBA, and then particularly the YLF. Um, they help you to connect with more people. They help you to connect more people like you who are dealing with the kind of issues you deal with, and you you can get, get um, share perspectives. You some, some there are things you will say that will help others, and things others will say that will help you. You can take your uh, challenges to them and for, for perspectives, and, and that could just be what helps you solve a particular case or or um, address a particular issue on in the legal opinion or, or something like that. Um, but also importantly, uh, networking within the MBA also gives you some sort of visibility. This can be helpful for referrals. Uh, when people know you and they know what you do, uh, when someone else needs the kind of services you render, your, your name would come up in their mind and, and can offer it. Um, it also builds your capacity, I mean, in terms of leadership skills, communication skills, these are some of the things you would learn from I mean, uh, working with um, active organizations or arms of the NBA, rather, uh, like the YLF and SBL, SLP, and uh, SPDL, which some of which um, Dr. Lee mentioned earlier. So, because I'm particularly interested in YLF, I'm going to talk to you more about YLF. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, so, the YLF focuses on young lawyers. Uh, um, as presently structured, the, the council has led by Professor. Uh, is uh, designed to attend to the needs, the professional needs. Uh, please don't go and ask them for money to uh, do your wedding or something like that. So they attend to the professional needs of young lawyers uh, from one to seven years um, across the country. Uh, but there is also uh, a substructure, uh, so to speak, in the sense that um, if you are in different jurisdictions, you can find out the young lawyers from uh, executives uh, in that particular branch, and then find out what the activities are and join the YLF in, in your branch. Uh, that also helps because each branch uh, tends to organize activities tailor made for that particular branch. So, if, for instance, in a particular branch, they, 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 they know, they identify that the common area of practice is maritime, they can organize lessons and, and and mentorship sessions or um, seminars and other things tailor made for those who practice in that jurisdiction. It's, it, it helps. But one thing is, you need to look out for the um, announcements and information on, on activities of the YLF and participate both at national and um, local level. Um, you, it, it really helps. It really helps. You can you can grow a lot from participating in these activities and connect with senior lawyers, connect with people from outside the, the profession. It helps a lot, um, just as other sections of the MBA can be very helpful to you. Uh, the last point is self care. Now, in, in all of these things, you're exerting yourself one way or the other, physically and mentally. Uh, a young lawyer needs to take care of himself. I mean, ordinarily, the bodies of the job are a lot, um, especially for instance, I mean, for instance, if you're working in some commercial law firms where you are, so to speak, on the job uh, around the clock, uh, people tend to have calls into the night, uh, and then you draft agreements again, you have to look at a document overnight and send it out before the next morning. So you tend to uh, be busy a lot. If you are in litigation firms, I, it's, uh, for very busy litigation firms, it's also the same thing. Um, there's always a meeting, there's always a, a process to respond to within a specified period of time, and there's constantly pressure. 
um, what this what I'm trying to say is the work is demanding for any successful lawyer. And if you want to be successful, you're going to want to exert yourself and put in the work so it can be demanding. And then at the same time, you now need to do all these other things that we're all recommending: join SBL, join YLF, um, read, network. Um, write articles. So all of that can be demanding. One thing you should not forget in all of this is to take care of yourself. You need to be able to unplug um, and rest, sleep, eat well, uh, take care of your mental health. Um, if you need help at any point in time, you know, see, see a specialist if you need to. Um, just make sure you look after yourself because at the end of the day, you have yourself to, uh, to yourself. Um, uh, so that is very important. So I'll just um, close on that note, and if you're able to also look at the summary, it may be helpful, which is that I say, do the work, it is very important. Uh, understand the terrain, understand the terrain talks about all of the issues I talked about, um, understanding what, how people perceive you, how you perceive yourself, the kind of work you need to do, um, how you know segmented the industry can be. So sometimes you need to specialize, but at the same time, Clients are also looking for people who understand a bit of everything. So you also need to know a bit about everything. Uh, so it's just about understanding how things work and understanding the area. Then socialize sensibly. Um, yes, reach out, network, but um, comport yourself, respect yourself. Uh, don't throw yourself at the feet of people uh, in the name of being a young lawyer. Um, and at the same time, don't go and act all lotty and proud because I told you to assert yourself and, <laughs> and, and respect yourself. So. Um, um, I wish you all the best, and I'm sure uh, if you have any questions, we can look at that. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Muntasi Adamu, Chairman Young Lawyers Forum. Uh, thank you very much, Toby Adebowale, Immediate Past Chairman Young Lawyers Forum. I think this is what you call uh, keeping the best for the last, because again, I think. Uh, your leaders, as the young lawyers have just spoken to you, and very contemporary, the issues they have raised. Um, before saying my final thank yous and goodbye, um, and making my final comments, I think there are a number of questions in the Q&A box, and I think that most of those questions were directed at um, Adioye. But what I'll do is, as I go through them, I'll answer those that I will, and then ask Toby or Muntasi to interject as necessary. Uh, so the first one is, sir, please uh, talk about the area where a young lawyer will put more energy to get to the top as an aspiring uh, corporate lawyer. Well, I think, um, my view on that is that Dio did quite a good job of the topic, and he ran through his uh, the competency uh, framework. And in that competency framework, you will see all the relevant heads that the SBL has recommended to the MBA, and indeed the MBA has adopted as what a good corporate lawyer needs in order to succeed. But corporate lawyer, litigator, whoever you are, whatever you are, there are certain things that I think you must understand about the profession. Number one is what, who is the lawyer? What does the lawyer do? What are the tools that he uses to do the job that he does? First of all, the lawyer is someone, whether he's a litigator or a corporate practitioner, he's someone that represents people. And the high standard that's respect, expected of someone that represents people, so if I have to represent you, for instance, I have to understand your case better than you. I have to understand your business better than you. I have to understand your problems better than you in order to provide solutions to them. And I, it's a bit of a complicated or complex uh, um, profession because you find that your main tool is knowledge. So, so being in the space where you understand that it, it takes a lot to drill down things, very highly competitive. You're dealing with people as intelligent as yourself. So you require a lot of discipline. You require, you're required to understand the technique of doing everything. And that's why I do, we'll talk about effective communication skills. Dr. Dimba talked about effective, effective communication skills. My Lord, Justice Dimba. Uh, yesterday again, 
he talked about talked on those things, uh, communication skills, presentation, discipline, diligence, being analytical, research-minded, thorough. There are quite a number of things that you need, but the most important component of all of this, in my view, is the discipline to see all these things through. And, and I must say that you must take your opportunities, whatever you are doing, wherever you are, whatever work you are doing, you must be someone who is minded to create an impression. And that means that you must be diligent, you must be a champion, you must do things better than anybody. And I, I think that the notion, I'm, I'm someone who uh, I always frown at the notion of young lawyers thinking of themselves as young lawyers. I would think of myself as a lawyer first before anything, and I've always thought this way. That way, you know that you have been you you've been you've been sworn to a profession. You are a member of that profession. You are as good as anybody else in it. The only other thing the next person has more than you is experience and some exposure. But with the right level of diligence, with the right level of industry, with the right level of network and inquisitiveness, you will find out that you can come up tops on any matter that you're dealing with. Because you deal with matters on a file by file and case by case basis. And that's why industry and discipline, I think, are the most important components of, of, of success. Muntasi, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah. Hello? Can you hear me? Muntas, I wondered whether I wanted to add anything to my comments. Yes, can, on that you, can you hear me now? I can hear you, yes. Okay, yes. So I think you've actually, yes. Let me, I think my network is, like I said, I'm, in, I'm currently in the northeast part of the country, so my network is a bit shaky. Uh, Be careful. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes, you know, not one of the money, so. <laughs> Yes, I think you have actually captured it honestly, aptly. Yes, I think um, the, the most important thing I think for any lawyer is, of course, you need to put yourself out there. And I think it's one thing that um, you in person, have, you have actually shown that a lot in what you do and how you try to give even young lawyers that you work with the opportunity to actually prove themselves, you know, to shine and everything. I think, like you said, Every young lawyer, I remember you, what you just said now, you've said it to me over and over, over, and over again, like a couple of engagements before, about the idea of you need to see yourself as a lawyer first before, before you see yourself as a young lawyer. So once you have that mindset, I think it gives you the leverage you need for you to actually go out there and shine like the star that you are. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Montasi. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's your advice for a new week who wants to be an in-house counsel? Do you advise the person to go ahead or is it better to garner experience first by working in a full service law firm? Toby, I think you can take this one. Yes, personally, I would advise working in a law firm if you have the opportunity, working in a law firm for three, four years uh, before going in house. It helps you to build the breadth and uh, depth that you would definitely need by the time you start to deal with different issues um, as an in-house counsel. And because you, you might also find that being an in-house counsel can be somewhat um, more of, uh, to use the word, a lone ranger situation um, co compared to law firm where you have about three, four, five colleagues, you can easily turn to uh, for, for a second opinion on an issue, second, fourth, third, fifth opinion on, on the same issue for proper balance. And you see more people discussing issues from time to time and, and you, you build uh, knowledge and, 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 and perspectives on, 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 the same, on the same issue and uh, legal provisions. You don't have that necessarily in an in-house position. So it is preferable that you have built uh, your legal skills and uh, analysis and all of that to a certain extent where you're able to take decisions on your own uh, before you, you go for such positions. Thank you very much, Toby. That reminds me of an advice I had a long time ago, early in my career. So in that role, it was in England, I, was, uh, I worked in a department of about 100 lawyers. And then I got a position that meant that I would advise a particular department within the same organization. And um, 
my boss at the time advised that I could do the advising right from working with my colleagues within the legal department. And I found that quite useful because what happens when you work as an in-house or a dedicated lawyer is that the people who you work with don't understand that sometimes you need to consult, you need time to read, you need time to research, and you, you need to brainstorm with your colleagues. So I completely agree with you. And, and, and most importantly, I think that the choice of where you work is critical, whether it's in-house or the firm that you work in. Uh, anybody who is making a career choice, I think you must look at where you're working and ask yourself, do I have the resource in that organization to help me develop? Do I have the people with the knowledge and the skills to help me on my own skills? Even when you're going in-house, you must ask yourself, how does that in-house organization operate? Because when people talk about in-house a lot, there are certain in-house people who work in-house and it's in a real estate firm. They're the only lawyer there. They just graduated out of school and they're made to um, do all sorts of things. And one must be careful to grow atrophy in their career. So this is a profession that is, the skills are quite transferable and one must consistently seek to equip himself. Now, beyond that, we must be cognizant of the fact that Nigeria doesn't give you a lot of latitude or space to choose. So you must be conscious of the opportunities that you face and use them well. If you find yourself in a place where you have no option but to take on a job because of your financial circumstances and you have to go in-house, take advantage of the MBA ICLE trainings, take advantage of the SBL trainings, SLP trainings, take advantage of your networks, make sure that you never give advice in the role that you play that is not above board. So if you're not sure of yourself, try to, there are a lot of people you can reach out to, to ask questions about what to do, always do the right thing and keep developing yourself. Then the next one is, please, can you further adumbrate on good communication skills? Uh, I wonder who's going to take that one. I'm not a great communicator, so <laughs> Toby, you might want to take that one. <laughs> Well, well, for me, um, I am also learning to communicate well. But one of the things that I've, I've learned is ensure there is clarity and you can keep it simple. Simplicity and clarity do a lot of good. They do a lot of good. Um, it is good if you can speak fluently, arboratory skills. It is especially important, especially important if you can write well, because a lot of times as a lawyer, you need to put your opinion or, 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 um, or advice in writing. You are going to have to handle a lot of correspondence, draft briefs, draft legal opinions, regardless of any part of the practice you're, you're focused, focusing on, you're going to need to, to write a lot. So, Build very good writing skills, and you can only build writing skills if you write consistently. Um, try your hands on commenting on topical issues um, as they happen. Write a short uh, analysis and, and publish on your on your personal social media page, or send to a legal blog. There are quite a number of them now. Um, if, if you want to even push yourself at that, do some more research. Uh, write a properly researched article and send to a journal. There are quite a number of journals as well, locally and internationally. If you do this consistently, you will find that you are communicating more effectively. And when we think, we, we actually think a lot more when we write. And because we are thinking a lot more when we write, when we speak about those things we've written about, you will find that you are even more fluent than you will ordinarily have been if you were just think, speaking on a random topic. So uh, read, research, write, and then speak. Yes. Thanks a lot, Toby. I, I think I, I like the phrase, keep it simple. It's, I mean, what is communication? Communication is uh, me talking to you and you understanding what I'm saying. Me sending you an email and you understanding exactly what I mean. So in order to be an effective communicator, I think first of all, you must understand the subject matter of which you communicate. If you understand the subject matter very well, then you're able to communicate in a way that people would understand you. But it's also a skill to keep the communication simple. Um, I think I, I, one of the uh, people that I like reading their judgments is Lord Denning. If you read any Lord Denning judgment, you see that he breaks it down so simply 
that it's not difficult for you to understand exactly what he's saying. So reading people who are great communicators or listening to great communicators can also help you develop your, your own communication skills. But you must be conscious of your audience all the time. Who am I talking to? Am I actually, does he actually understand what I'm trying to say? Is he going to walk out of the room believing that I have actually solved his problem or communicate, made him understand what the issues are or what the solutions are? Um, and the next one is, I've been following the training by the NBA ICLE here on Zoom and the replays on YouTube. Today, I researched some of the speakers and the outstanding achievements made me overwhelmed. I wonder when I will be able to attain such heights. It has made me overwhelmed that I don't know where to start from again. <laughs> Please help. Address to Mr. Tobina. Thank you, sir. I like, I think um, this is one of the most uh, interesting questions of the entire series. And, and I'm, I'm happy that it was addressed to me. I think uh, important or one of the popular cliches is that Rome was not built in a day. So if you go to someone who is in primary school or secondary school and you reel out your CV and you address yourself as barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, the person will be overwhelmed by that, surely. And when a non-lawyer here is a, is a barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court, just the barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, uh, that Supreme Court is a, a bit intimidating. The person might actually think that there are barristers that are not of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. So uh, I, I, I want you to understand that uh, you build your blocks gradually every day. Don't be overwhelmed by anything. Don't be intimidated by anything. And there was a point uh, Justice Dimba made yesterday, it's, and, and it's a point that I often make myself. Career development is about knowing where you're going and then walking towards it. So it's one of the things that you walk from the answer to the question. You know where you're going. You're walking towards it del diligently. And every day you find you added one more thing to your retinue of achievements, your retinue of experience. And, and for me, as a lawyer, it is even more about experience than, than achievement. It is every day, what am I doing better? What am I doing better? And once you keep at it, I think that you will build that, that CV. You can imagine myself, a career that has taken me from Nigeria to England, practicing as a qualified lawyer in England, working in the public sector and the private sector over the years. I'm coming back to Nigeria and continuing my practice. Somebody had asked about um, changing, and I think Toby was, no, Toby made the comments in his presentation that if they ask me to move from my comfort zone today to another zone, um, I might find it a bit um, uh, difficult. And I accept, but you see, we are confronted by the challenges that we face in life. I, I always knew I was going to come back in Nigeria to Nigeria at some point. Uh, in my 10-year career in England, I knew that once I struck the 10-year mark, I was going to come back. Now, now the thing for me was my practice had gotten so specialized that if I came back to Nigeria and I said I was an urban regeneration lawyer and that was the only thing I was going to do, which was what I'd done for about eight years of the last of the 10 years I spent in England, I would probably not have had any work to do. So I had to retrain in other areas. And, I, and, I, and, and sometimes when I find that I have a, a difficulty in certain things, because even though I understand the principles of law around it, I haven't done it in practice before. I speak to people who are my contemporaries. I speak to people who are my juniors. And, and that's what you do. Once you know where the knowledge bank is, say, God forbid that a lawyer will know all law, but he should at least know where to find it. So you must be very creative, very innovative. and Industry and discipline is what will take you there. So, and you should never, I mean, being overwhelmed is the first way never to get anything done. Yeah? Rather than be overwhelmed, see it as a challenge. Say to yourself, if these guys can do it, I can do better. Whatever it is they say they do. And if there is any that excites you, try and find a way to get into it and get it done. 
It's not, there's nothing, uh, there's, it's not rocket science, not difficult. Um, next set of questions as new weeks, how do we register, join these MBA sections? Second, as a young lawyer who desires to do litigation for a while and uh, switch to corporate practice, which of the MBA sections is advisable to join? Uh, Muntasi, do you want to take this or do you want me to? I was hoping you would do then I was supportive, but let me just start anyway. Sir. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for I think the first one about young lawyer trying to move to do litigation before moving to corporate practice. I think that, that by and large speaks to my own experience as well. Because I, I started as a, at um, a law firm in Abuja that was fully a litigation law firm where I did I was able to opportunity to be on some of the high profile cases in Abuja at the time. You know, I did that for about a year and half before I moved to, because I knew long time, I really want to do more of corporate practice because I'm more tilted towards, because growing, growing up while I was staying in university, I think one lawyer that I, I looked up to at the time, I still look up to him anyway, is um, Benga Yobidi, because I was somebody who, of course, if he fully struck record, somebody who was, who was a more commercial lawyer full time. So, so I knew I was going to do litigation. I was going to do corporate practice long time, but I just knew that yes, at least for a start, let me have a feel of what it, what it means to be a litigator. And I think that's why, that's what, what was the reason why I decided to actually stay in the litigation law firm for a year. And I think it's a good one. One thing, one thing it does, it actually exposes you to, you know, you get to go to, to, to court, you know, you get to, you know, draft the good documents, you know. I remember one of the cases we had, we did in, I think it was in my Lord of Zimbabwe's um, court at the time. And remember me rushing early in the morning to, to file processes, you know, because he said he was he's going to hear the case that same day and we must close the matter, you know. It was quite an experience for me. And I'm sure I understand why you also want to take that out. So I think it's, it's encouraging. Like Toby said earlier, you need to, for the start, you should don't limit yourself. Anything that comes, actually, just en enjoy the. the the opportunity to do more than like don't put a limitation to yourself anything that comes whether litigation whether corporate practice just go for it at the end of the day after then issue of specialization comes in maybe as you grow older in the profession yes i think i will so you can, you can go ahead now thank you thank mm. you muntasi mm. uh I, I i would encourage every uh body on every uh delegate to try and become a member of their branch. It's actually mandatory to be a member of whatever branch that you belong to. And once you get to your branch, ask your secretary for how to become um, members of uh, the various sections. Toby, I don't know whether you have Endurance's email address for the section on business law. Um, you can also drop uh, perhaps Mrs. Folasha Bealis email address or Chief Ferdinand Dobby's email address or something on the chat box, please, if you have them. Okay, so that or, those, yeah. or, no, or phone number or the Mondo Bani. So if you look at our TCCP uh, um, platform, you could drop their phone numbers also from there so people can reach out to them and then make inquiries on how to join. Uh, then um, the next one is, uh, Montasi, thank you for taking that question. I think it was quite exhaustively dealt with. Uh, plow your hands in anything that you have the opportunity to do as a lawyer, law is law. And then start finding your aptitude and your opportunities because the market is not so robust that you want to cubicle yourself very quickly, unless you have a retinue of clients that can fit that need or indeed that that area is so sophisticated that you don't need to do any other thing. But I think versatility, a bit of versatility also helps you. Please, sir, uh, whilst what would you recommend for a person who have interest in corporate insolvency? Well, that's an interesting one. We have a, a corporate insolvency series coming up in April, and I'll encourage you to participate in, in that um, series. And uh, also the, the BRIPAN, um, you, you might want to research into the BRIPAN and try and um, take their courses. It's actually now required that 
anybody who wants to do corporate insolvency would have a certification, should have a certification in, in order to do it. That's in the newcomer. And then um, also look out for all sorts of trainings on, on corporate insolvency and then um, look at firms that actually specialize in those areas and see whether there is an opportunity to work there. Uh, sorry, I'm having poor network connectivity here. We'll also be privy to the slides and certificates, if any time. Yes, the certificates will be issued at the end of uh, the training today for today's training. I, I hope you've been getting the certificates for the others. Um, as far as the slides are concerned, uh, you should get all the slides to your email this week. I had a dedicated email for, uh, um, not a dedicated email, but uh, an email list for all the new weeks. So I'll ask the IT people to send the slides across to all of you. But as far as the record is concerned, MBAHQ is a YouTube channel. Do please go there and you know, take advantage of all the training sessions that are there. Uh, please, today being the last day of this session, can we get the recordings of all the sessions from day one? We will really appreciate that. I particularly would really appreciate it. MBAHQ, MBAHQ is the YouTube channel. They are the repository for all our trainings. All those on this series have been uploaded there. The ones that have not been uh, will be uploaded today. Uh, uh, then, uh, please, how can we join the YLF at the national and state levels? Also, how do we become registered members of the MBA to receive updates on information? I think I'll take the MBA one and then uh, I'll let Muntasi take on the young lawyers one. And as far as MBA is concerned, um, I know we're talking to the IT people about having your emails uploaded. I think there's something connected to your SCN numbers, but it is in the interest of the MBA to make sure that everybody has, uh, and th that we have the emails for all the lawyers in Nigeria and communications are put out to them. So we are working on this and we should be able to give you a definitive position soon, but do, 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 um, Keep your eyes open for email communications from the MBA. Muntasi. Yeah, thank you, sir. Um, regarding how to join the YLF, um, like Toby also mentioned earlier, we have um, YLF in all the branches of the MBA, local branches. So we have, I, I'm sure, you, like uh, Mr. Tobena said earlier, every member, every lawyer is expected to be a member of a, of a branch. If you're practicing Lagos, you're expected to be a member of the Lagos branch. If you're in Kano, you're expected to be a member of Kano branch as well, or, or anywhere you practice across the country. So I think that's the point, really. Once you belong to, to a branch, that branch also has its wildlife, a local branch within, within the branch as well. So what I would advise is, wherever where you're practicing, try to identify your branch first. Then also, after identifying your branch, then ask about the Young Lawyers Forum of the branch. I'm sure they would, they would link you up with the person, either the schools or either the other members, right? So you can identify yourself with them. And for the national, of course, the national is more like the governing council that oversees the activities of all the branches across the country. That's what we do essentially. And um, from the from what we do as well, we try to see how we can be, be that interface between the wildlife of the national MBA rather the national, and also with the with young lawyers across the country. And of course, the, the wildlife has been organizing trainings as well, just like um, the ICLEA. We have been organizing some trainings as, across the country, and of course, we intend to within before the end of the month, we're going to announce an arbitration competition, which is going to be a small phase of. So, of course, like, like um, I said earlier, just identify your branch. If you belong to a uh, register with a branch, local branch of the MBA, and then, of course, we tell them to link you up with the local branch of the YLF. I think that's how, how to go about this. Uh, thank you. Mm. Thank you, uh, Montasi. Uh, so, someone says to break the distance barrier, how can a young lawyer gain remote job opportunity? or remote role within the country as it is in other professions? 
Uh, that's a tough question. Um, I don't know that there are many, um, uh, I don't know that there are many law firms or I don't know of any law firm that offers virtual or remote working opportunities, but they may be out there. It's a question of uh, Google is your friend, find out whether those opportunities exist. Yeah, but, uh, Do you know any? Yes, yes, well, yes. some of our okay. virtual yes. Yes, um, we do complex so. is one uh, uh, complex, uh, yeah. mm. other law firms. Yeah. And um, in the direction that the, the legal profession is also going, which may may, may perplex yeah, Mr. Tobin and some other people in the higher <laughs> level of the MD. Um, there are also hubs. Hubs you can sign up to provide uh, legal services, legal services yeah. as a um, mm -hmm. as a freelancer, so to speak, uh, but you you will need to do some research on this. Toby, 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 why do you think I'm going to be perplexed? <laughs> because uh, I know senior members of the bar have been wondering, what are you guys building? I'm quite excited about innovation. Mm -hmm. I'm quite excited. So, so the reason why, so if a new week says to me, that you know remote working opportunities um i'm i'm a contact person right uh so we do i think four days a week one day remote working but if i'm working with a new a young week that's starting out with me i believe that the most he learns from me is from shadowing me and what i do there are things that you pick up as you move around every day so 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 when people say oh uh, we require a lot of training I think that on the job training is the most efficient kind of training. And I don't, if you are a very brilliant young lawyer and, and there are many like that who don't need any guidance or any training and they're able to work on their own unsupervised, you know, it's the kind of thing you find in Nigeria, then um, I would say, well, by all means do it. But professional uh, competence and not being negligent and giving the right advice to the client is something that is critical to the integrity of the profession. So, so one thing that I find that we don't have in Nigeria, and I think we should have, is pupillage or training contracts as you have in England. It's one of the things, again, we did not pick up from England. So, so if you were qualified as a solicitor, to, uh, you, have, you do your LPC ready to practice, you're required to do two years of training contract, do three, three different seats. So a reason for you to gain hands-on experience even before you become a solicitor, right? And those who are barristers have to do a pupillage. And so, and then even before the person works on supervised, it's required to do another three years post-qualification. All of that is to protect the integrity of the profession. So um, whatever remote work that somebody is allowed to do, I think that, we need to be cognizant of actually picking up the training that we want. Looking far and asking ourselves, where would we want to be? So when you build apps and all sorts of um, devices that you use to perhaps advise your clients and all of that, who are the people who are using it? What level of advisory do you require at that stage? So uh, whether we like it or not, artificial intelligence has come to stay. We either live with it or or we die. But the most important thing is being sure that in practice, you have the right synergies that actually helps you, one, to evolve, two, to maintain the right integrity for, for the profession. Um, so I wish access to the lectures held on previous sessions of this program. I wish to assess, okay, uh, please can you guide me? It's MBA HQ. Toby, can you type that, the YouTube channel for them? Just do a note for them on the chat box. Uh, anybody can go to MBA HQ, right? It is, uh, that's where we have the repository of all the trainings we've had, not just the series, but all the trainings. And, and it's quite rich in the resource that you have there. Um, uh, please, sir, uh, I humbly apply that you address this. I have been in attendance for more than five days of the training, but I only got a certificate bearing two MBA. Uh, peace, thank you very much for raising this issue. 
I will speak to the IT team and make sure that you all get your certificates. Thank you very much. Just know that we're keeping a record of everybody who's attending and our certificates will go out to everyone. Thank you. Um, yes, I have not received any certificate for any of the MBA ICL sessions. I've attended and I like them to please, I like them please and all the hours I'm putting. Please make sure you put in your right, the correct email address as you register. Uh, we're going to send the, 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 the certificates to you. I think certificates were ordinarily generated automatically, but I think we're having a few technical hitches and they're being done manually. So it might take a bit of time, but you will get them nevertheless. How can a young lawyer gain remote opportunity that are not location restricted as it is in the other? So I, I think we've taken that now. I hope the answer was satisfactory between Toby Montasi and myself. Um, hello, sir, Tobena, please. I'm yet to receive any certificate, my certificate of insertion. I have attended so far. I've not also received my any slides of the lectures as promised. I always drop my email on each and every session I attend. I hope you look into this. Thank you. Yes, I'm looking into it. And uh, that's what I think you will make. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and you have done well in taking us through the process. Good luck. God bless you. As I feel, you will make a good leader. Thank you very much for your kind words. Um, but we're looking into it. I will make sure that you get all of that. As for the papers, we will circulate them. I hope you all have put in your correct email addresses. We will circulate the papers, all of them together, tomorrow or next now that the whole uh, session is finished. Um, we didn't want to clog up your system with a lot of slides and papers, but we'll do that definitely. I haven't gotten any certificates so far. I've also not received this. I've been attending, okay. Thank you for the platform given to us. Uh, some of the speakers promised to share their contact details through the facilitators. But at this moment, we have not received any Please, this will be vital as some of us still want to tap from the knowledge of those who are seasoned in the profession. So I have been in attendance already uh, and haven't got any certificate. So thank you very much, uh, dear delegates, for attending the series. I'm very grateful to all the panelists who have, uh, at no cost to the MBA, delivered these sessions. I'm very grateful to the chairman of the Young Lawyers Forum, Mr. Montasi Adamu, my good friend, who, whose dedication to the development and evolution of his young lawyer colleagues is very, has been very significant and well noted. Uh, also to Toby Adebowale, who has been very helpful and was uh, very uh, involved throughout the process, right from the creation of the concept note of this series to the reduction of the concept notes to uh, outcomes and expectations and all of that. I am very grateful to you, Toby. I'm grateful to all those who have participated in this series. I encourage you to look out for the various sessions of the MBA ICLE and indeed all other trainings of the MBA. Um, in the coming months, you're gonna have see advertisements. Do engage. This is the most significant organ of the MBA because it's the only organ that feeds to what we do on a daily basis. There's no way you can be a complete lawyer without engaging in continuous pro continuing professional development. So thank you very much. Uh, please remember that if you're not on the table, you're on the menu. Um, remember that Life is about the impressions that you build. And developing the right attitude in the workplace is essential. Being a person of value is even more important. Making sure that people don't pass you by and you're not an also ran, that you're someone of significance in whatever you do. It takes discipline, it takes industry, but it is surmountable. This is a great profession. It's a profession that promises you prosperity but it's a profession that is very demanding and very jealous. You must apply yourself 
And no matter what situation or circumstance you find yourself in today, it is not the end of it. Uh, the MBA is trying every day to create opportunities for training, for mentorship, for professional and career development. And I think that if you follow all the things that are going on around you, you are definitely going to have a successful career. It's a difficult country. It's a difficult time in the world for professionals, for everybody, including lawyers. However, diligence, industry, and discipline will guarantee you success and prosperity over time. Thank you very much for being, having been a part of the series. I am encouraged by the numbers I see, and I wish you the best of luck as you grow and evolve in your career. Good luck and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Tubina, for all you do. We are truly grateful. And I'm sure I'm speaking for everybody on this call and those that have left already. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Montas. Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, I mean, this has been very helpful to everyone, I imagine, and even to those of us who came to chip in one or two things. And as what someone said in the comments box, you are clearly a great leader. Uh, so we look forward to uh, more of this um, in, in various ways. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Toby. Thank you for your support always. Thank you, Montasi. Thank you, Sarah Ajijola. Thank you, Wale MBA. Thank you, guys. And see you very soon. God bless you all.